Lighting is simply the illumination of an object or an environment. But lighting for photography, now that is something else. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play around with natural sunlight and craft it in more ways than one. Let's find out the type of light that you need to be chasing so you can create breathtaking imagery. I am going to make an artist out of you. And the drums of the world are getting louder. A sound you never heard before. Gonna come to your town, gonna find your corner. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kenneth Lawrence, and this is part six of my photography tutorial series. If you're new around here, and if you missed the first five videos, you can click on the playlist card right above me. And in case it doesn't show up on your device, I'll also add links in the description. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to control a source of light that's nearly a hundred million miles away and leverage every minute of it to create works of art. Not only are we going to achieve this during daylight hours, but also after the sun has long set. Light is the most important element when making a photograph. Without it, there can be no proper composition, no proper lensing, and no proper exposure. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Let's dig deeper into natural light and learn how it affects photography. Throughout the course of the day, the available light from the sun is constantly changing. It varies in color, intensity, contrast, and more. Understand it correctly and you can create dimension and texture. Master it and you'll be able to command the desired reaction from your audience. The most common beginner mistake that new photographers make is literally shooting everything within sight without taking lighting into consideration and the fact that they should artistically implement it. Sometimes the lighting is too harsh and other times it's too mild. The best time of day to take photographs in natural light is in the morning and in the evening, the hour after sunrise and the hour just before sunset. It's when the sun is slightly above the horizon and that renders a very soft golden hue. This time of day is called golden hour and it's a favorite amongst many photographers and filmmakers for its incredibly dreamy look. In addition to the time of day, the placement of your subject in line with the angle of light is equally important. This is going to be your first step in crafting light to set a mood. Play around with the angle of light just enough for the sun to directly hit your lens and you will create artistic lens flares. Golden Hour portrays a happy, surreal mood and it brings that emotion to life. There's another dream look that you can create during Golden Hour. Angle the sun behind your subject in such a way that it creates a golden halo along the outline of your subject. This style of lighting is called rim lighting. When the effect is restricted to the hair of your subject and not their complete body outline, it's called hair light. Remember that the intensity of sunlight increases through the day as the sun rises overhead. As I mentioned earlier, the intensity of light is softer when the sun is closer to the horizon and it begins to get harsher as the sun rises higher. Its warm hues will also reduce. Overhead sun is avoided by almost every single professional photographer and filmmaker because of the strong highlights that it casts onto your subject. This harsh light becomes unpleasant to look at and it will cause your subject to squint in order to keep their eyes fully open. Needless to mention that you're going to burn both yourself and your subject. As an artist, you have to make the most of the available tools and I'm going to show you how you can leverage harsh light to do exactly that. Turn your subject around so they don't have direct light falling onto their face. You're essentially playing around with the position of your subject and the angle of light again. Keeping the source of light behind your subject is called backlight. This will result in a darker face but at least your subject's eyes and expressions won't be affected by the harsh intensity of light. To counter the darker face, 
use a reflector or a sheet of thermocol to reflect sunlight back onto your subject. This technique is called fill light because you're filling in those darker areas with just a little more light. Another way to tackle harsh light is by moving into the shade completely. You're basically using multiple large objects like buildings and trees to block out direct light and simultaneously reflect it. This is what you call bounced light. It's soft and the shadows that it casts are extremely subtle. If you have plenty of natural bounced light coming indoors, that's another opportunity to make the most of your available daylight. On days that are cloudy or overcast, the sun is completely diffused and there's no direct light. The shadows are almost completely eliminated and even the colors in your frame get desaturated. This soft light largely portrays a mood of sorrow but can also portray joy and even mystery and suspense. All that depends on how you direct your subject. The understanding of how light interacts with different colors is a true testament of a photographer's artistic capabilities. As you already know, lighter colors reflect more light than darker colors do. Implement this basic knowledge into your scene and you will draw your audience's attention exactly to the colors that reflect it. In this photograph, both the horse and the woman's dress are bright and that makes them stand out against the darker setting that they're in. You don't need prominent light and shadow to create contrast. You can simply do that with the knowledge of how light interacts with color. This is one technique which shows that you're in proper control of your subject and its environment. Remember that as an artist, you cannot leave anything to chance. You have to be able to create something from nothing and take a calculated decision in order to express your vision. Let's bring back direct sunlight and craft it a little differently this time by creating shadows. Instead of having your subject's face completely illuminated, introduce a bit of shadow play. Revealing just the right amount of your subject adds a sort of depth to the visual. The correct balance of light and shadow portrays a sense of mystery and drama. You can even tell a story by removing your subject completely and simply photographing their shadow. Conveying a message through limited visuals induces your audience to use their imagination and fill in the blanks, thus making your image all the more powerful. Use indoor spaces as another opportunity to experiment with shadow play. When the sun is overhead, the natural light coming indoors is bounced light and it's going to be soft without scope for much shadow and contrast. Direct light is what you need and that will come in when the sun is closer to the horizon. Angle your subject so only portions of them are lit up. Play around with the available space and try to be as creative as you can in terms of composition and mood. Let's step outdoors again. When sunlight filters through a canopy of trees, it creates several pockets of light. This pattern of lighting is called dappled light. Position your subject near one of these pockets so they are partially lit up. Dappled light can also be subtle and have smaller pockets of light that are scattered across your subject. You can alternatively create these patterns of light artificially by using props or everyday household objects. How about we do something even more different and not light up the subject at all? Place your subject against a brighter backdrop and expose for that brighter background. Don't just place them against the sky, but experiment with other locations. Creating a medley of silhouettes and shadows will heighten the visual interest of that photograph. I'm going to revisit soft light again, except this time it's going to be at its most subtle. Just after dawn, the first rays of morning light cut through the atmosphere at the beginning of golden hour. You only have a couple of minutes to photograph a scenery that has the slightest tinge of warmth in an overwhelming sea of cool tones. This is first light. 
Similarly, in the evening, at the end of golden hour, the last rays of direct sunlight gently caress your subject before it turns to dusk. This is last light. Mountain peaks are perfect to photograph first light and last light because their sheer height gives you a longer window of time. The shortest probable window of time goes to blue hour. It's the few minutes before sunrise and the few minutes after sunset when the sun is significantly below the horizon. As the name suggests, the light is completely bluish. The intensity of light is also extremely low and you're going to need a tripod and a long exposure. There are a few times when blue hour is accompanied by shades of orange and pink, truly making it a photographer's delight. Let's find light in the darkness of night. We can best do that when it's a full moon. With exposure times as long as 30 seconds, you can literally illuminate large landscapes and make it look like a late evening or a daytime shot. Take these photographs far out from the city and you'll also capture the starry night. Moonlight is basically indirect sunlight and illuminated landscapes during full moons are truly a spectacle to look at. It's something that our eyes will never naturally see unless you have some cuckoo dooku night vision. Experiment with different styles of lighting and remember to choose soft light more than harsh light. Keep in mind that you don't always need to have your subject fully illuminated. Shadows create depth and contrast and you shouldn't hesitate to explore your creativity. Lastly, play around with the position of your subject and the angle of light to tell a story. In my next video, I'm going to talk about raw image processing and show you how to completely transform photographs and bring them to life. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button and subscribe. Your support is going to help me build this channel and community and take it a long, long way. See you in the next one. And the drums of the world are getting louder. A sound you never heard before. Gonna come to your town, gonna find your corner. Let there be lights. And let's photograph it. Lighting is simply the illumination of an object or an environment. But lighting for, for in this video, I'm going to show you Buya Shaka. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Ooh, mama, mana, what's happening? I can't even record in peace.